Hello and welcome to this presentation. My name is Lee Snyder, the product manager for the Steel segment here at Trimble. And what I'll be showing are three tools that we've added to Tackle Structures version 2018 to make you more efficient on your projects. So to show these tools, what I'm going to do is just simulate a common scenario that you'll have on your projects to show how they could be implemented into your workflows. So let's just zoom into this specific area here. Let's say for our example that we just received a change order indicating that this flat roof actually needs to be sloping. So from this beam over here up to this beam, it actually needs to be sloping by two feet. And that from this corner on up to this corner over here will also need to be sloping by two feet. So to begin, what I'll do, I'll just highlight both of these beams, activate my construction line. I'm actually going to make these lines magnetic so that when I move these beams, all of the handles that pass through those will move along with it. But before I get too deep into my design changes, what I want to do is come in and introduce this first tool, which is this undo history. What this does is it shows you all of the commands that you're doing so that you can easily undo or redo through those specific commands instead of clicking undo and then seeing in your model what's actually happening, you can view the commands and decide where you want to undo. So for example, if I just go back to beginning, you'll see that both of my construction lines are gone. And then if I want to start redoing this, I can see there's my first construction line and my second construction line. As I hover over a command, you'll also notice this little target or bookmark here that's just going to bookmark, if I click on there, a specific location in my undo or redo history so that it'll be easy for me to go back to that location if I need or want to. So I'm going to close this for now, but this is just going to keep track of what I'm doing here within the model, and then I'll reopen it as we get further along in this process. So what I'll do is just go ahead and click on this line. I'll just go to move and move this up the two feet. And that will move all of the handles and everything that passes through there. And then I'm also just going to grab this handle, this yellow handle over here, and also move that up the two feet to shift that up. Based on the design drawings, uh, we don't need this beam anymore. They're actually going to be adding in some additional information. And now maybe I need to also add in some infill beams. So to make this easier, what I'll do is come over to my work plane, and I'll activate my work plane tool. And then as I hover over this beam, you can see there in that orange color, my new coordinate system is going to be set along the slope of the roof, making it easy for me to model things in true to that plane. So I'm just going to go ahead and click there. And then you'll notice down here this new work plane handling tool that will allow me to save these user coordinate systems. So if I wanted to save this, let's say that we call this my roof slope. I'll just type that in, click on add. And then that's going to store that user coordinate system so that I can easily refer back to that. What this work plane handler tool also does is it stores my model origin, any base points that I've created, and any other coordinate systems that I have modeled. So if we zoom out here, I'll just toggle through these so that we can easily see those. So if I change to my model origin, you can see my coordinate system will change there. And then if I go to my reference model, you can see that that's actually where my reference models alignment should be from. The real coordinates that you can see that there and then if I zoom back in here and I want to recall my roof slope I can just click that and now it's automatically set to that slope to where I can begin modeling so if I come over and let's say we needed to add in some more beams I can just begin clicking and then you'll notice that these are added along that slope just as you would expect okay so now if we go back to my undo redo history, we can see here that it's keeping track of all of this information that I'm doing here. So here's where I came in and moved my construction line that I can easily click and begin to see what I'm doing over here. Here's where I deleted the beam, added in those steels. So it's just keeping that history. Or I can go all the way back to the beginning and see what it looked like before I started. Or I can click all the way to the end and see the current state of that. So, so just a real nice list to be able to keep track of the commands of that are happening there. So a common thing also would be, let's say that we needed to come in and select this information. Maybe we needed to colorize this or export this information as a report. So I'm just going to go through and start clicking and selecting these objects. And then maybe as I go through that, I sneeze or I misclick and I end up deselecting everything that I just selected. Before, what I would have to do is go in and start selecting everything that I had selected before. But what we've added is the Select Previous Objects command. So I can just run that, and it will highlight everything that I had previously selected. So it makes it much easier 
if you misclick or if something happens, you can recall that information that you had highlighted. This also works in the drawing. So if you're going through and selecting things on the drawing, so it'll make it much easier to recall that information if by accident it gets deselected. So in summary, we've showed the undo redo history, the new work plane handler, and the select previous command, which we hope will make you more efficient in your projects. As always, feel free to send us any feedback that you may have, and we hope you enjoy this new development. <music>